Welcome to another episode of Anecdotes. This one is a not a happy one. Or at least it's one about failure, which is a large portion of Dota 2. Are you laughing because yeah, you were thinking about of... saying Kyle's career instead of Dota 2? I mean, it's an easy, it's an open window. I'm not going to, no, I'm not. Open goal. Is anyone a failure if they're happy? No. Truly, isn't it more about a self-satisfied state of mind than success? So Dota 2 and failure. Yeah. I mean, in failure, can, you can look at failure in multiple ways. You can see failure and losing a game could be failure. No. But you could also learn a lot, so you don't have to see it as failure. If you lose to a really good team, it's not necessarily yeah. failure. I think the way athletes, uh, personalities, professionals treat failure is like more important than how they respond to success or winning. Yeah. Because especially nowadays, right, where so much... like. So much of what you'll do is going to fail. Even yeah. like this episode could fail miserably, depending on your Probably is. depending depending on your definition of failure, and that's and what is so important. Because like, what is success? If we get if you get like uh, a certain number of views, does that make you successful? For if you me, make a certain amount of money, is that successful? No, for me, anecdotes is successful if we can make it consistent. So by just simply creating it, we have succeeded. Yes. Okay. Which is not necessarily right now. The success would come if we actually upload it. True, which we will probably do, and by we I mean Shiver. Yes, but that for me is success. I don't really like. No, no offense, guys, but in terms of views, I don't really care as much. I just like to be able to put something out consistently, mm -hmm. because I am of the belief that if we do that, then success will follow eventually. Yeah. I I do it. Um, one of my favorite authors is Kurt Vonnegut. Okay. He was of the opinion that every human should spend at least a little bit of their time creating something. Be yeah. that singing, dancing, writing, baking, whatever. But that is, um, I think it was like the only, his, he put it really eloquently. Something about like the way uh, the human souls need to express itself. And right. uh, it's always stuck with me a bit. And in addition um, to the topic of failure, it's going to happen. Um, even players like Jordan, Michael Jordan has got like one of the best quotes about it. He's like, there's something like 26 times in my life, my teammates have trusted me to make the game winning shot and I missed. Yeah. He lost in the playoffs this many times. Like you, you, you have to embrace failure. Even if you're just thinking about like a day to day experience, like maybe you want to go out with friends or go to a bar. You might have a terrible time. You might try and talk to a new person and they hate you, but that's the price you pay for the good experiences. Yeah. You don't know what success is if you haven't experienced failure. Yes. You need bad nights to experience the good ones. You yes. need bad friends and bad jobs to know what a good job and a good friend is. And it's easy nowadays because we sort of live our lives on stage even as just regular individuals because of the, like, the amount of social media we're bombarded with. Bo Burnham has a great stand-up to this effect, which is that our generation is sick because we've turned the audience into the performers as well and we're all looking at each other and always unsure and uncertain of what we're doing is correct or proper and it leads to us not taking action which is the only thing you need to do in order to be successful Hello, just to social try. media hmm. um, that leads us back to Dota 2 mm. because there's a lot of success and failure in Dota 2 yes definitely well, there's a, actually there is a lot of failure and a little bit of success in Dota 2. If you look yes. at if you look at, uh, at teams, there's only one team that wins TI every year. Mm -hmm. There's not a lot of players in the grand scheme of things, yep. and there's a lot of them that try every single time, yep. every single year. Yeah, I agree. It's it's really really hard to win, mm. and I think part of what it's part of its culture because we always the the winners. It's a like confirmation bias when a team wins. The, the writing was on the wall the whole time. You yes. know, the, the, the smart fans, the insiders, like you should have known that this team or this guy would succeed, right? Yeah. Like Anna, as a perfect example, the superstar of TI8. But before that, he was looking for a team for six months. He was playing for a position because he couldn't find one. Everyone thought he was bad. Same way everyone thought No Tail was bad. But then they win and it's like, oh, see? Ha, <laughs> idiots. Knew it. Knew I it. knew it. And truthfully, um, like, OG deserves their TI win, but in other ways, you know, they did get lucky. They yeah. did have a, a perfect storm, so to speak. Like, and by luck, it doesn't mean, like, luck is making the decision to get Anna. 
the decision to get Thompson, the decision to get Papa Serral as the coach. I don't think those things are luck. It that they were available might have been luck. How, luck is the wrong way. How do it's I just this? the stars of the line at the exactly right time. Yeah. They were available. You know, if there's a there's a lot of people out there who normally when they grow up they have this one person that's like, well, if we are single at the same time, we're gonna be in a relationship. But normally mm -hmm. then they never are in a relationship at the same time and you know they grow apart. But this is like that, but then at some point they're both single at the same time and they have a yeah. relationship and it works out. It's fortuitous, I guess I'll say. It wasn't it, it's the it, you know what it is? It's not luck as much as it's like it's catching a break. Mm. Think about how hard no tail specifically has been grinding. Like since Fnatic in Han, we're talking 2010, 2011. This yep. guy has been on the horse. I'm a pro gamer, I'm gonna be the best. And that effort is what you don't see. You would, it's easy for to say like, oh yeah, they, they, they You've got seen the last year and then it stops. Kind yeah. Of. You see it from, t from mm -hmm. the previous TI onwards. Exactly. I, but it's been years and years in the making. Kuro has a great philosophy um, about effectively, it, it's written, right? Mm. There's going to be a tournament. My team might win. My team might lose. I can't really impact that as in as much as that I will work hard. I will draft my best. I will do my best. I will play my best. But I might win. I might lose. And I think that that's the right attitude, mm -hmm. not just for competitive sports, but for, for life. Because that's what it is. You might bust your ass. You might be the greatest person that's ever existed. But they, it doesn't matter. Look at Van Gogh as a perfect example. He committed suicide as a failure. And after his death, he's become yeah. one of the most popular uh, painters of all time. One of the most well-renowned figureheads in the art world. But you know what? He'll never know. And in a lot of ways, you know, maybe OG goes a different direction. And we never know that no tail was really the glue yeah. that's held together three different generations now of Dota dynasties. Successful generations yes. as well. Because even though they didn't win TI, it was not a failure. It was mm -hmm. a success. Yeah. And I, I think also, I mean, we can look at their success and that's great. But for a long time, for them, they mm -hmm. weren't having any success. From the outside perspective, you can see that as a success. But I think as a player perspective, you always want more. You were not satisfied until you win that TI. And how do you deal with that amount of failure? Because it's it's a lot of failure. Yeah, it, you have, it's about how you frame it. If you like, there's a line over there like it's like you're only a failure if you quit. And mm. quit doesn't just mean like I I quit playing pro Dota. Yes. But I didn't see that as a. I made that decision because I wanted to do something else. Yes. And if your your version of success, your definition of success changed. Yeah. It, it's to the point like I want. I really desperately wanted to win two TIs. That mm. was my goal for like four years. Um, and realize like you know if you told me hey I'll devote another three to four years like Dota you give me another four years Kyle yeah. I'll give you two TIs. I'm not even sure I'd want to do that. I don't know if it's worth it to me anymore because of the intense dedication and just work like all consuming it's difficult to have relationships mm -hmm. with uh with a significant other with your parents with friends your whole life is traveling you yeah. effectively are part of a six-man cult and you hardcore are devoted to serving your one true deity yeah. that is dota 2 and the frog his prophet that can his fingers and you're now playing a completely different video game. What you learned for the last year means nothing. Go be the best again. Your perspective has shifted. Your um, your priorities have shifted. Yeah. Yeah. That makes sense. But for all the, the players out there who are still playing. Hmm. Oh, what do we tell them? Oh, yeah. What do we tell them? Because there's a lot of, there's, even in pubs, um, people are, you know, the, the MMR system is there. So people should, on average, have 50-50 win-loss. Mm. But it's human nature to take the losses way worse than yeah. taking the successes in a, in a good way. Yeah. So how, how, come, how well, come people continue to try? Oh, uh, well, okay. I'll hit, you know my mantra, Sheaves? Sure. And this is mostly is my, my, the, my core, uh, the demographic of mm. a pro Dota player is usually a guy. And I would tell them that you'll always, you can always have more money and a bigger dick. But you know what? That'll be the case forever. You gotta accept mm. who you are and try to make 
the best of yourself no matter what for yourself because it can always be better. You'll always in some ways be a failure. No one is just 100% winning, okay? Charlie Sheen flew high, but after 15 years of cocaine and hookers and not enough sleep, et cetera, et cetera, his lifestyle choices don't really make that much sense anymore. But okay, I don't know where I'm going with that. No. Sorry about that one. That why don't you pick that a, a why totally not, different direction. Why not Taylor Swift? Because from the outside, her life looks perfect. Yeah. But I, I, I would not like. I don't think it is for, from her perspective because nobody ever thinks that. Yeah. So well, I'm sure she's struggling with some things for herself that we can't whoever, even. Yeah, everyone is. Think about yes. And that 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 goes into like a whole other conversation about like just mental health in general, failure mm. in general as things that should be acceptable to not just own but to talk about. Like everyone, yeah. everyone fails. Everyone has some sort of heartache or just. The, there's a, what was the line? It was in a book I just read. It was something about how you could go up, um, you could start a conversation with anyone, be it a stranger, close friend, yeah. whatever, and in the middle of it, just stop and say, oh, you know, it's from The Pale King by David Foster Wallace, okay. actually. And, he, and say, hey, wait, excuse me, is something wrong that you'd like to talk about? And his theory was that everyone would be able to respond, why, yeah, how did you know? Like, because everyone always everybody has... Everybody has a struggle somewhere. Exactly. Be that big or small. That yeah. makes sense. And if we translate that into Dota 2, once I, again... If you try to play Dota 2 professionally, you're going to fail, you're going to lose, and you have to accept it I feel and like learn. I feel like that is one of the things that... When you're... Like, I can't look at, at team dynamics because I don't... I'm not close enough to a team to, to be there when they lose. Yeah. But I always feel like... It's an underlighted part of a team dynamic, and mm -hmm. it, it probably happens in every team, and I would hope it happens in every team, where every team has communication about the communication, yeah. if that makes sense, to make sure that everybody feels in a safe enough environment to, uh, to speak about things that they consider failures or that they are not sure about without wondering like Ooh, what if i say that i messed up there and they might kick me if i if i messed up mm -hmm. there if i admit my mistakes uh i think that is i don't know i feel like that's also always something maybe that's a, that's also a male thing because there's a lot of males who always like say that they are they're not able to open up because when a woman opens up she's sensitive but when a guy opens up yeah it's seen as weak yeah and that'd be i've had a bunch of conversations uh, about uh Feminism, I don't want to get into this topic No, at all, no, 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 no. How men, there, there are things that both sexes could benefit from yes. when it comes to certain discussions and topics because it is very much still, it's not something you talk about, but if you're, if you're in an all-male environment, you're good, you, you man up, right? Yeah. Deal with it. Men, but you can't. If you're Dota and you're losing, you can't deal with you can't it. All, you, you gotta talk You can it try through. to. You can but, try to, but eventually it's too much. Yeah, uh, everyone, it's too much for everyone if you don't open up and talk yeah. about things and try and process stuff on your own time. And where, where the hell, how do I center this back? Well, well, how do you, like, how do you deal with losses as a team? When you, when you're in complexity, mm. you lost well, I, more than you won. I think we, I think we mm. dealt with losses poorly but at the same time everyone deals with losses very poorly i i think we we had this uh theory that was not mine but that i adhere to because it was team discussion organization whatever that after losses people should be given space and time to just cool off so there would usually not be a post-game discussion um after like a big qualifier loss right okay. and i hated that because I think brooding inside of a loss with no catharsis, with, okay, but this happened, mm. we, we, we got shit on or it was close or it doesn't matter, let's go into it right away while it's fresh. Like, let's deal with this trauma and move on and be better tomorrow versus, oh, yeah. oh um, let's just stew in it and then tomorrow we'll, we'll try and half-heartedly bring it up when it's not as fresh, when we're not as emotionally invested and part of us has already moved on to the next qualifier, to the next tournament. And I don't know the the way that it's done in other teams we also had this idea that dota is a democracy which i mm. think is ludicrous we can talk about that another time sure well, the short version is you look at the the winning teams in dota the puppy mm. kuro ppd no tail 
you get an unkickable captain personality and build a team around this person's theory of Dota. There can only be one idea of Dota yeah. because there is one drafter and one team. That That's how a successful team runs. That's why Solo and Puppy and Kuro will always have a top six Dota team because people trust them to be that and they'll always have the yeah. first choice of uh, of the litter. That can be another one, as you said. Wait, is that it? We're really out of time? Yeah, we're really about to run out of time. Um... Final words on failure in Dota 2. For me, it's part of it. And I hope, I can only hope that all teams and all uh, players, and especially those not at the top, those grinding and working and hoping that they'll get a break, I hope that those teams acknowledge the importance of talking about things and working through failures as a team, as opposed to brooding and waiting mm -hmm. and just watching it, uh, waiting for it to pass. And mine would just be to recognize effort first mm. as in, in not just your own life, but when you try and evaluate others through your lens. Um, I would have respected uh, Johan Notel and Seb just as much had they lost game five to LGD. Yeah. I think that what they achieved is incredible, not because of the ultimate result, but because of what it took to get there and the amount of effort and sacrifice they put, they put themselves through. Yeah. And to understand it's not just them that worked so hard that we sitting here could say, oh, I'm glad they won. They deserved it. A lot of people deserve success, yeah. but that doesn't necessarily mean you'll be a champion. Life and it doesn't mean fair. you can be bitter. No, life no. is not fair. Life is not fair at all, but you still have to go outside and brave whatever horrors may be out there in the hope that you find something wonderful. Yeah. All right. Well, we'll see you guys in the next episode of Anecdotes, which is hopefully going to be a little bit more cheerful. <laughs>